Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. We are with our life coach, Coach Karen Gray, joining us here from beautiful Flower Mound, Texas. How are you? Hey, I am doing awesome. It is gorgeous here today. How are you? Oh, great. Beautiful weather in New York as well, but it's probably much hotter in Texas, right? <laughs> it's always hot in Texas. We just, <laughs> we just keep the temperature up. Oh, well, we're excited to have you here and to talk more about uh, your life story, uh, I know. And then we're going to get into your business and, of course, all that you're doing to help so many, as you say, build unshakable confidence without the weight of self-doubt. So first and foremost, let me direct everyone to your website, Coach Karen Gray. That's C-O-A-C-H-K-A-R-E-N-G-R-A-Y. Dot com. So thank you for being here. I would love to get to know you. Would you mind sharing a little bit about yourself and give us your backstory, please? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity, first off. And um, I'm excited to share because I feel like my story is a little bit unique in some ways because I actually was adopted and grew up with a family that lived in the... Um, canyons of New Mexico in the northwestern New Mexico on a reservation. My dad worked for the gas company, so I grew up on a reservation and just had this wonderful life of freedom, and I grew up as a feral kid from, you know, Gen X, and it was just amazing. Great way to grow up. But along the way, I realized and, and came to discover that I was adopted, and that began to impact everything about Mm -hmm. who I was, who I thought I was, my truth, my confidence, what I thought I had to offer the world. And it just created this situation where I began, you know, some really bad habits of people pleasing and just trying to qualify to be good enough for the world, basically, through my eyes. And um, fast forward, I spent 30 years in corporate America leading, but always killing myself to try to please others and measure up. And um, then I had um, four children. My daughter became oh. a, um, a rodeo queen competition, a competitor. Oh, my and goodness. I started coaching her to get ready for her pageants. And in those moments of coaching, I got to get some clarity of, hey, it's not just me that's struggling with this. And I started seeing the similarities of the things that I was facing with my clients and the things with my daughter. And it's like, okay, I'm not the only one in this. Mm -hmm. If it's not just me, then I can take what I'm learning in this coaching opportunity and help others with it. And it just changed my world. I eventually just became a full-time coach and use all of those experiences to help women overcome their, what they believe to be traumas, to begin to see them as the things that are really their superpowers. And um, that's the life that I get to live now. I live in Dallas, Texas area, and full-time coach and lead women as president of a a statewide women's organization. And I just feel like I have um, an amazing opportunity and a really blessed life. Oh, amazing. Well, thank you for sharing that. First and foremost, how old are your kids? Girl, (laughs) I sound like I'm 12. So if you're just listening to my voice, I have a really young voice, but I have a 37. Uh, You look young, too. I'm on your website, sweetheart. You look great. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. 30. You don't look old enough to have a 30-something. Say say this again. Uh, Yeah, I got 37, 31, 19, 18, 17. So back to those people-pleasing and making bad choices. I started really young as a mom. Um, So... You know, I, I am a young mom, I, uh, but I'm 55, so. Oh, God bless. See, go. I'm 46. I have a 7 and 9-year-old. I waited way too long, but everyone has their own journey and path, but I envy you. We do. <laughs> we do. Thanks. Right? I mean, Thank you, you. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned you were adopted. At what age did you find th- this out? I discovered when I was 6. Okay. And it was just a really innocent, you know, my aunt was having a baby and I asked my mom about, you know, me being in her tummy and the conversation just came out. And in all, 
you know, I think my mom was just doing the best she could answering that question. Yeah. To say that, you know, that I wasn't born from her tummy, but from her heart, and that they chose me. But mm-hmm. as an adoptee, what I heard was they chose me, which means that at some point in time, they might choose not to have me. Oh, oh my and heart so, hurts. so, you yeah. know, I think as kids, we just, we have these little moments. Sure do. Along the way, or as people, as humans. And they form these really solid rules that we begin to look at the world and judge ourselves by. And as parents, we do a lot of trauma to our kids, even if it's well-meaning, even if it's completely unintended. And that's Mm -hmm. just the, the fragility of humanity. So now I get to see that all of those things, I call them, I have a podcast too, and it's called yes. Rock Movers. I like, want to hear about that. Hold on, hold on. What is what is it called? Where do we find it? Tell us. <laughs> it's Rock Movers, and it's about moving the rocks out of our bags. Oh, beautiful. And how do we find and that? So it's, I'm on all the platforms. Mm-hmm. Um, I also have links off my website too, so you can click over from there, but... Um, I began to see that, you know, I was carrying all this heavy baggage and talking to people that were carrying heavy bags. And it's like, okay, I can choose to continue carrying all of this Mm -hmm. as if it happened to me, or I can see that it happened for me and I can choose to just carry the lessons that I've learned and use those lessons to help other people. So seeing that we have a choice and that every thing is within our our scope of do I want this is this good for me does this serve me it's just it's so empowering and that's the gift that I love giving to other people to see that they have the power to choose and that everything begins with our thoughts and what we make things mean well boy oh boy I I love your energy your personality your enthusiasm your encouragement and clearly that's what your clients um you know love about you so it's beautiful thank you for sharing your story and i hope um your listeners are tuning in want to remind them to go to your website coachkarengray.com and uh thank you for um you know sharing this um now i have to ask my goodness you're doing a lot of virtual work right and you know you're based out of the dallas area but there's premium personalized coaching community support virtual support do you want to kind of talk a little bit about the extent type of coaching you're doing for people, corporations. I mean, there's a lot to you as your trusted friend and cheerleader. I love that. I, <laughs> yeah. I love being the woman that is the, the safe place for other women that are, you know, can relate to the things I share about confidence and stepping into spaces and not, you know, doing it unapologetically, doing it with that unshakable confidence. And I get to do that with as I mentioned, I'm president of an organization that's 105 years old. It's called Texas Business Women. That's my volunteer hat where I lead women with this um, nonprofit organization. And then with my coaching, I do offer um, that really high-level one-on-one coaching because it's very personal, the journey of self-discovery and, and really overcoming all of the things that we tend to pick up along the way. If you're listening to this and you're a woman that's over the age of 30, you're going to have some scars and you're going to have some things that have happened. And having that trusted person in your corner to help you process all of that, make decisions, make career decisions, life decisions, relationship decisions, it absolutely changes everything. So that's the gift that I get to do. I do it um, in many different ways. Speaking corporately is one of the other things that I do. And, yeah, as you said, I do a lot of things. But mainly the thing that I love is being that advocate for a woman to help her be her own cheerleader. So I, I help be her cheerleader first. And then um, until she can step into that role for herself. And I have lifelong, I have, you know, some people that I started coaching in 2019. And I'm still working with them. We have a different relationship now. It's more of a support role and just checking in. And I'm kind of like, you know, that trusted attorney that you have that you call in whenever you need some help, need some advice, have a question. I do that as well. So um, it's really just about 
providing women with the support so they never, ever, ever feel like they can't do something that they really have on their heart to do or that they have to do it alone. Beautifully said. Well, thank you so much. Now, how does it work? Do you offer like an initial consultation? And uh, would you mind just going over that process? Is it a a free discovery call? Or, you know, how long does it take for you to talk to someone to kind of figure out what they need? Absolutely. So on the website, you'll see several links where you can either jump into some of the, the free things that I offer to see, okay, is Karen even something that I want to spend time with? Is this Um, for me so you can I have a self-worth quiz to help you discover what I call your self-worth archetype and if that leads you to other questions how do I utilize that then we can go into a free call and then coaching would come from there so I do have um, what I call a tiered process because we all know that it's really important to work with someone that you like working with or being with and that you trust and so I understand that that takes a little bit of time so if you don't know me you're not local that's where most of my clients come from are referrals or here locally but if you're listening to this and you're like okay I like what she's saying but I don't even know if I'd want to pay for that you get to try out you can also be in my community I have a, a free community on Facebook where you get to jump into hot seat calls every now and then, Um, just get to be a part of my world, ask questions. It's a great way to just try on this relationship of getting supported by me. So um, I love being that resource and giving people ways that they can make it fit their life because it's not a one-size-fits-all. We don't live in a Lego land where everything is happy and Um, You know, we really need people that can meet us where we are so that we can get to where we want to be. And that's what I try to do for my clients. Beautifully said. All right. Well, we have to take a quick commercial break here. Would you mind sharing all forms of contact, uh, how we can reach you, website, social media, phone number, anything that you want to share? Yeah, absolutely. So I have... um, I'm on LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook, and it's Coach Karen Gray on every platform so if you just google coach karen gray you should be able to find me um there's also links off of my website which is probably the best place to launch from and then um of course my my rock movers and youtube is also coach karen gray so i try to keep it really super simple not over complicated um but i also have um a toll-free number and it's 833 we coach Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing this. All right. What we're going to do is uh, take our quick break here. And when we return, obviously, we'll talk more about the work you're doing, how you can help our listeners. Sound good to you? Sounds perfect. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Thank you. And to all of our listeners, please stay tuned. We'll be right back with more. We ask that you stay with us. Don't go anywhere. Hey guys, this is Casey Armstrong. Domestic and family violence causes fear and harm to the mind, the body, and the spirit. The soundtrack for the movie 17 Days is a musical depiction of what is captured on film. The soundtrack is here to change the course of direction of anyone who is involved in abuse. Actors Miguel Nunez Jr. and Omar Gooding help capture the true emotion of what the journey of being in a domestic violent relationship feels like with their award-winning performances. The first single is Walk Away. Walk Away has a hypnotic pattern, yet refreshing point of view for anyone who can relate to the difficulty of being made to feel as if you are always the cause of the problem in a relationship. The album is produced by AEMG, DJ Profluent, and Terry D Films, and is composed of songs from award-winning artists and producers such as Chub Rock, Drummer Boy Fresh, Five Mics featuring Dave East, Stunna for Vegas, Omar Gooding, Styles P, and many, many more. For more information, go to at 17 Days The Movie. Do you regret the past or worry about the future? Did you know that you can build resilience simply by focusing on what you do have and can do? Having an attitude of gratitude and taking time to be in every moment? My name is Nathan Hickman, and as a happiness pro at Task Pro and the author of the book Take Time to Be, I want you to stop living in the cycle of the next day roller coaster. You can find me at taketimetobe.com and mycontactinformation.com. 
Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. The best way to describe Mickey D's crispy chicken sandwich is crispy, juicy, tender. And yes, it's all one word. Crispy, juicy, tender is like five lit smacking, trap bass crunk, child tea, ooh wee, and then some. Everything you could want in a chicken sandwich. McDonald's crispy chicken sandwich. It gets even better. Try a new crispy chicken sandwich paired with medium fries and a medium Sprite for only $6. Only at McDonald's. Price and participation may vary. Promotion pricing may be lower than meal pricing. ba da ba 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 Is your house a sauna in summer? An icebox in winter? Been putting off the upgrades because of the hassle of working with contractors? Or the big expense? Sealed makes your house comfortable, healthy, and up to three times more energy efficient. We modernize your home with insulation, HVAC, and smart technology. Sealed covers the upfront costs. We only get paid if you save energy. Plus, we match the right contractor and coordinate all the work. So, you can just sit back and get comfortable. Unsealed, sealed, you'll feel the difference. See if your home qualifies at sealed.com. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Coach Karen Gray joining us here. Excited to have her talking about her corporate work. Obviously, she had extensive knowledge in corporate and she's done that for many years. And then also as a personal, effective, transformative coach and really helping you ladies out there, empowering us to really tap into that uh, greatness that we all have and to really help you discover what uh, your intention is and what you really want to live the life. Let me just read a testimonial or two, if you don't mind. Karen, are you with us? I am. Yeah, yeah, I got to peruse your website even more during the break. But I just want to say this, uh, for example, Mitzi Z from New Mexico says, I cannot say enough good things about Karen Gray. She was there when I need the mindset change to move forward from my then current position and step into the unknown with my own coaching business. When I need help and guidance again, I know Karen will be there. Uh, Also, here's Laura G from Colorado. From start to finish, Karen's coaching expertise and genuine dedication to her clients has shown through. Without a doubt, she deserves a five-star review for her exceptional services. Uh, And there's more. So thank you for being back here. And I know for today, it's important uh, for you to continue the journey of helping people. So what else in particular did you want to make sure our listeners are aware of? Um, Yeah, thank you. I've worked with thousands of women in various roles and, and places. And one of the things that I really want women to know is this the feeling that we have to compare ourselves or listen to the gurus that you have to do this to be successful or life has to look this way to be successful. Um, it's just a lie that we get fed. And I really want to encourage and empower women. If you're hearing my voice today and any of this resonates, um, look inside to see what is it that you really want to do and what are the missing pieces. You know, we're so quick to look at our gaps rather than how far we've come and how far we want to go. So if I could encourage you in any way today, I want you to see how amazing you are. I want to hold a mirror up, see the beauty, the the amazing things that you've done, the amazing things that you've accomplished, and the impact that you've made. And if you're struggling to do that, if you're struggling to have that powerful self-talk, you know, if we say the things to others that we say to ourselves sometimes, we would be humiliated because we just, we're so critical of ourselves as women, especially. Um, So I just want to encourage you, if these are the things that you're struggling with or feeling challenged by, then that's exactly where a coach like myself can step in and help you. Well, could you share some of your client experiences with us, some of the things you've helped, uh, you know, women work on in particular? And I always love hearing that, unless you want to share something else. 
Um, no, yeah, I'm happy to share anything. Um, you know, I think what I see, because I, I'm stepping into bigger conversations and asking better questions as I, you know, have grown in my coaching, and being a coach or the act of coaching is just kind of who I am. It's not really what I do now. Um, so I have these conversations everywhere, but over and over and over again, I hear women, that self-talk piece, um, I, I would say that that is the biggest challenge that women in corporate spaces or entrepreneurial business spaces are facing today is the internal language that we have, the dialogue with ourselves, and then having the courage to step out and do something that others don't align with, others don't agree with, or others aren't doing. And I have a, a client, she was um, a CPA um, and a financial CFO for many years, like that was her, her trajectory. She had always worked in corporate America, and she is 43, was going through, you know, employer after employer because she'd get with a company and then that company would get bought out and then she'd get with that company you know move up in the ranks and then that company would get bought out so these small companies were being bought and absorbed by these larger companies she ended up getting laid off and was unemployed for a short time and was absolutely blaming herself for that and so going through the coaching process what we saw were this was really triggering, this um, job loss was triggering some other abandonment issues with abusive relationships, her marriage, in fact. She had just got divorced before the layoff happened. And having the process, going through the process of identifying where these triggers were, where these feelings were coming up, and how finding a narcissistic husband and an abusive husband was actually safe and familiar for her because she grew up in that environment. And so as humans, we tend to go where we're safe, even if that thing is destructive, even if that person is abusive, it's a known or a familiar from some point in place. And so just asking the questions of, you know, is this what I want? Is this what I deserve? Is this where I want to go? Opened up some doors for her where we could begin having the bigger, deeper questions. And that empowered her to a point that she was able to create boundaries. She was able to start a new relationship that was super healthy, very good boundaries. And she ended up going into business for herself, starting her own CPA firm, for a really unique industry, the cannabis industry. And she bought a franchise. And it's just to see that kind of growth, to see someone come in almost to the point where they couldn't raise their head and look you in the eye, that lack of confidence, to now she's speaking and traveling and talking about this. Well, that is amazing. And you must feel so good about this. Do you remember? I mean... It's amazing. <laughs> now, let me just ask, in, in the beginning, did you have a coach too? Were you ever coached? Absolutely. Um, so I didn't have what... I had mentors. And one of my mentors is... Um, I don't know if you are familiar with, but probably, Zig Ziglar. His daughter, Julie, was my first, really first mentor, Aww. and she also coaches, and so she started helping me see that as women, you know, women in older generations, they had older women to teach them the ways, so we didn't call it coaching, but that's really what they were doing. We don't really have that in today's society, so that's why coaching is so important, because we don't have those mentors. We don't have the same family di uh, dynamics that we did in previous centuries or previous generations. So having a safe space with Julie gave me the opportunity to process things and work through things and push myself through a career um, into bigger spaces and, and take bigger risks to believe in myself because I could see myself through her eyes. 
and it was amazing. Um, it was such a gift. And so using that and then my Dale Carnegie coaching and going through that training professionally, I was just able to pull all these little bits and pieces, and I love, love, love per- personal development. So I always took courses and classes, and I was able to combine all of those experiences and really create a unique and dynamic coaching program that was one I always wished I could have had. So, but yeah, and I have three coaches right now. I have a health coach, I have a business coach, and then I have a spiritual coach. Wow. I love to hear that. Thank you for sharing. All right. And in our last two minutes together, what else do you want to make sure our listeners know before we end today? You know, I think that we have a, an, a, oh gosh, what's the best way to say this? In society, women tend to feel like we can't ask for help. We have to have it all figured out or we have to figure it out on our own. And I just want to encourage the women out there to find your tribe, your circle of support, and then step outside of that circle to have someone that's willing to say the truthful things to you, the hard things to you, whether that's a mentor or a paid coach. Having those different levels allows you to be the best version of you. And then the third and final piece of that is to find someone that you can help. It doesn't have to be as a coach. It doesn't have to be a paid position. But pour what you've learned into someone else because we often learn more when we teach others. So if there's a mentor, a tribe of women, a group of women, and then someone you can help, those three things, I believe, helps us to have the most fulfilled, most elevated, and most impactful lives. Beautiful. Well, thank you for sharing this. Now, if we want to reach out, could you share um, all forms of contact again, please? Yes, absolutely. I would love to connect with people. You can reach out to me, Karen, at CoachKarenGray.com. My website is CoachKarenGray.com. I'm on social, Coach Karen Gray, and it's G-R-A-Y. Got it. All right. Any social media pages you want to share before we go? Um, really, probably Facebook and Instagram um, or LinkedIn, but it's all Coach Karen Gray. C-O-A-C-H-K-A-R-E-N-G-R-A-Y. Those are the best places to find me and would just love to connect, love to support, and absolutely is free. Thank you. And would you mind also, you know, to leave off today, do you want to leave us with some advice, any quotes, any, you know, any tips on how we could start this process of healing, of doing better, any little things we could do at home today to make that small change today? Um, I would say the best advice, if I could leave any anybody with something, is to choose your words carefully because your words that you say to yourself design the life. So say the words you want to have come true, and don't say anything to yourself that you would not say to someone else. Oh. Treat yourself kindly. You deserve it. Oh, beautiful. Well, thank you so much again. Coach Karen Gray, pleasure having you, and uh, hopefully we shall connect again. Thanks, Jill. I appreciate it so much. Same here. Thank you. And to all of our listeners, stay tuned. We'll be right back with more. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Of course my kid's in the right car seat. Well, I think he is. Yeah, my kid's in a booster seat. He was ready to move up. He is ready, right? Her car seat looks like the right size. There are probably rules on when to move up to a booster seat, aren't there? Rear facing, forward facing? I think I have it right. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Don't think you know. Know you know. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat. I know my child's in the right car seat, or else I wouldn't get in the driver's seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council.